What is going on everybody? Your old pal Jimmo back again with another exciting video where we're going to be painting this Nissan Pearl White, uh, painting the fender, this hood, blending the other fender, the door, and then we have this bumper here that um, needs painted as well. So uh, that this bumper is a primed plastic, so what we have to do first is test it with some solvent, which I've already done, to establish that it is indeed a good durable primer otherwise you need to wipe that primer right off and start with a raw plastic but not in this case fortunately so we sanded it down and we are applying a white sealer now i'm going to be using the words sealer and primer probably somewhat interchangeably but in this scenario i'm talking about a non-sanding primer which in north america generally we refer to as a sealer so uh, the advantage of a sealer here is because base coat generally costs quite a bit more than sealer does so um, if we were to base coat over that black primer, probably would take about six coats of base coat to, uh, to achieve coverage. And in this case, uh, if we use the sealer, then it's only gonna take about two coats. So that's, uh, that's mainly why we're doing it here. On the fender, there is another advantage to it. And that is because that is a new part. It's covered in what is known as E-coat, which is a very thin anti-corrosion primer that isn't really meant for it to be durable or provide a foundation for a base coat. So in order to prevent that fender from stone chipping like crazy, we're gonna apply a sealer to it and that's also gonna give us the, the advantage of coverage at the same time. And for those of you that follow my work regularly, you might have noticed I'm in a different habitat than usual. This is a different paint booth in a different shop. It's an older Develbis spray booth. Um, it's nice and tall and long. I actually got a lot of really nice jobs out of it. I guess you'd consider it a reverse cross draft, so the air comes in the top and gets sucked out the back, but uh, it seemed to function pretty well. So um, I actually enjoyed my time spraying in there. Now I should point out here that this bumper is actually being sprayed at a different time than the rest of the car, just because it came in after the fact, after we had that, that front end painted. So. Uh, I'm going to splice it together like it's all happening in real time for your viewing pleasure, but they were done at separate times, uh, just throwing it out there. So, um, you know, some precautions had to be taken because this is a three stage. Every coat of mid coat pearl is going to affect the color a little differently, which we'll talk a bit more um, later on, but um, just keep that in mind. So right here, I got my sealer applied over that fender and my hood and just over the primer on the hood, not the entire hood. And now I'm just unmasking my door. So I masked the door off from the sealer just because I don't want any sealer overspray down that door. It'll just, uh, you know, it can be a little gritty in the blend area and or where the sealer tapes off. So just to avoid that altogether, I'm gonna take my door off and it gives me more blending space. So I don't use up any blending space unnecessarily. Uh, I'm also working with Glazer 90 line today, which is a little bit different than normal, which is Onyx, not that different. The Glazer is a little bit nicer to work with, uses a smaller tip for application. I have used this product before with Onyx, which is the Glazer 90, sorry, well, obviously Glazer 90 line, 90 M5, which is the clear product, um, like an orientation coat. It goes to kind of fill in any minor sand scratches to help blending or help with, you know, help make blending a little bit easier. Um, I don't think it would have, like we could have skipped this step and I'm sure a lot of people do, um, but uh, I like to put it on there anytime I'm working with metallic or any pearls. So now I'm gonna be applying my base coat here. So I'm gonna do my blend first and then I'm gonna go over top of everything. And it's gonna be about two, I think there's about two coats and an effect coat that I did to get full coverage. But what you need to do, since we're working with a three stage, uh, the idea is we're gonna have a solid color, which I'm applying now, the solid white. Once that's dry, we're going to apply the, the pearls over top of it, and each time we're going to blend it out. So I'm going to blend out my white here, and then I'm going to blend my pearls a little bit further on, further beyond that. But yeah, as I said, you want to make sure that you have full coverage with this white. So I mean, I think when I was first starting out, uh, I think it was a three-stage red, and a three-stage red or any color is really the same idea, and I actually have uh, a three-stage red. Maybe I can get that up there in a sec for you. Um, but uh, I remember having most, mostly covered and then I thought, okay, well, you know, my mid coat will cover the rest of it. I'll just put on some extra mid coat. But uh, it was a pretty foolish move. I was back in my really young prime days and I learned that lesson pretty quick. Uh, make sure you have coverage with your first step, your second 
step is mainly just to adjust the color. And I am using a new toy today. I have my Iwata LS400 for base coat. And I sprayed a few jobs with that, um, some higher metallic, some tougher colors. And I've got to say, I was very impressed with how it worked, how, how well it handled metallic color. So here is kind of an example. Here's a letdown pill. This is actually from a different colored trico, but you can see I have that first square or rectangle taped off. That is actually taped off into three sections. And you can kind of see how each coat of mid coat is going to affect the color. So right now, um, I just have my solid white. You can kind of see how it V's out there in the middle. That's how my white blend at this point looks. So since there's no metallics, you're gonna see a bit of a difference in color. And once we apply the metallics and blend it all out uh, again, then uh, that's gonna disappear. So you can see actually right now it already looks better. Um, so yeah, we wanna take the metallics, or sorry, pearls. I keep calling them metallics. What I mean to say is pearls because I don't think there's actually any met aluminum metallics in this, um, in this mid coat. But uh, anyway, with the mid coat, we wanna make sure we're applying it as evenly as humanly possible because every coat is gonna affect the color. So if it's a little heavier on one side than the other, then you're gonna have two different colors on each side. So it's uh, pretty important. Um, now to get this where I wanted it to be, it was, um, I believe it was about two coats and then an effect coat. Whenever, whenever I'm doing these spritz, I try to end off with an effects coat, an effect coat where I just basically increase my distance from six to 12 inches and it'll help even out everything and make it look nice and consistent. So here you can see this is after everything's been applied. It's looking pretty good. Um, so the one thing I'm going to do before I apply my clear, and that is check it with, uh, compared to my spray out card or letdown panel I did earlier. This is the actual one for the, the vehicle. And you can see now better, one, two, three. And whites are funny, like sometimes certain ones uh, are, uh, behave a little differently. Sometimes the mid coat may lighten up the pitch and darken up the face and sometimes it's the other way around. So you want to do a letdown panel to kind of see what direction it's going to go in and find out how many coats you need. So basically I'm just going to check everything for consistency, make sure my color is exactly where I want it before I go ahead and apply the clear coat. Another thing worth mentioning on three stage whites in particular, uh, you want to make sure that your prep is absolutely flawless and you also want to make sure that your guns are spotlessly clean because you, uh, if you have anything fly out into your base coat during the mid coat, then you have to pretty well start. If you have to do any repair, you're going to have to start back from the beginning. And, um, you know, that's not fun because I've had that happen as well where you have a little black speck come out of your airline or something like that while you're applying the mid coat and then you have to pretty well sand it off start back over with your white and then put your pearl on top and then that's that's no fun it's time consuming so make sure you take uh, all of those precautions so here we are applying the clear coat with my favorite gun so far the iwata ws 400 and i should have my sata 5000s to try out any day now and i can offer up hopefully a better comparison on how um, you know how that gun works because i hear a lot of people pretty happy with it but um, I like my Iwatas, so, um, you know, they're gonna have to perform pretty well to impress this guy. And we are using Glasshurst 923-220 clear coat on this job. And while I'm putting on the second coat, I'm gonna take a moment to, first of all, apologize, I guess, for not getting the videos out at the same rate that I used to, as you may or may not know. I'm no longer working inside of a paint booth day in, day out, so it makes it tough for me to uh, get videos of myself doing such. I'm still within the industry, I've just moved into a different area, um, and I still do paint uh, paint from time to time. It's not, not every day in a production environment, so it uh, makes things difficult to get the footage that uh, we're after to do this sort of thing. Um, however, I have had some conversations with my brother, who's in my previous role, uh, Spring, so uh, he's uh, expressed some interest in helping us out and getting some footage, so we might see uh, uh, some different perspectives coming down, which could be interesting. And also I just wanted to mention too, Refinish Network was originally launched with the vision of a community-driven website, videos, perspectives in general. So, I mean, if you are in a position where, you know, you like making videos, like recording yourself, like being shown, showing off your work, and you think you can help us out here, 
Uh, please feel free to reach out to me. I think Facebook's probably the best place to get a hold of me. So just send me a direct or refinish network, a direct message on Facebook. I'll get it, and um, you know maybe we can make some big things happen. And for those of you that haven't already checked out our Facebook page and liked it, make sure you do because um, there's always some interesting things going on there. And generally, if I go silent on, silent on YouTube and you're wondering did I fall off a cliff or whatnot, I do try to update the Facebook page with some regularity. And um, like I said, there's some pretty cool pictures and stuff like that from all over the world, all kinds of interesting things that you should check out. So uh, give us a like and I don't think you'll regret it. Other things I've been up to lately, I've been writing for an industry magazine called Body Works Magazine, which is um, an affiliate of Collision Repair Magazine in Canada. Uh, but Body Works more focuses on technician issues, um, painter, anything related to that. So it helps the technicians rather than the management side of things. So I've written some articles there. So uh, you can subscribe to their magazine. You can check that stuff out. And I think, uh, especially for the new guys in the trade, they'll find that magazine pretty helpful. But uh, enough of the shameless self-promotion. Let me get back to this job here. And it looks like there's not a whole pile to get back to because uh, I'm pretty well done with the second coat of clear. And uh, this job is um, pretty well complete. And I know you guys are going to hate me because uh, I'm going to tell you right now that I do not have an assembled shot of this vehicle because, like I say, this is a different paint booth I'm in. And the shop was actually about three and a half hours away, so I wasn't going to drive out there to get the uh, assembled shot. Um, but I can tell you this one actually came out uh, it was one of the nicer jobs I sprayed. It came up pretty clean, um, clear laid down pretty well. Uh, you can see this pillar here. Um, I had to ensure I had a good color match between that. So I was butting it between the, the fender and the pillar, which is never really ideal. It's always nicer to blend out, but we decided to butt it there. The color was pretty good. And I had to kind of just lift where I masked and check that color as I applied my mid coat, the pearl, just to make sure uh, I stopped once I had that color lined up properly. But um, there you have it. This is what I got here. So hopefully you liked uh, this video, enjoyed what I have got to show you today. And um, thanks for watching. So anybody who's new to the channel, don't forget to subscribe.